Watch out, serial killers. You turn around real quick, you're a serial killer listening to this podcast, you're like, what, what? Watch out, serial killers. There's a superhero that's hunting you down. And the superhero is also a serial killer, so get ready. And then we take a look at a trio of terrifying ghost stories. But these just aren't any spooky ghost stories. We're going to take a look at three ghost stories that may be the worst possible places for your soul to be trapped forever. Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. I hope you guys are having tons of fun doing whatever you're doing. We got a lot of stuff to cover, so we're going to get started right away. First off, coming in from my list of Christmas live stream contributors, wearing all the jingle bells in the world, everyone give a round of applause for Dave. Woo, yeah, come on in, buddies, come on in. Those jingle bells are stapled to your skin. Don't even try to get them off. Dave, you're going to be like, why do I give you money? We're always tormented. Dave, you're going to be our captain, our pilot this episode. If you guys can't support the show financially, I totally understand. Just help spread the word about the show. That really, really, really helps out a lot. And I want to say this real quick. I know we got a lot of stuff to cover, but I got to say this. This week is the four-year anniversary of Dead Rabbit Radio. Four years. 901 episodes, and I could not have done any of it without you guys. If you guys have ever told someone else to listen to Dead Rabbit Radio, if you guys have ever donated any money to Dead Rabbit Radio, if you guys have even sat back with a smile and listened to one of my super disturbing episodes, apparently there's some serial killers who listen to this show, you guys have done your part to keep Dead Rabbit Radio going. And I really, really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. The audience of this show has grown tremendously over the past four years. And it is so amazing that I can walk into my closet, sit in front of a microphone, and speak to so many people. But I could not do that if it wasn't for you. So really, guys, thank you so much. And I'm telling you this, not just to brag. I'm telling you this because I want you to start your projects as well. I started this show Four years ago, it has changed my life for the better. It really, really has. So if you guys have an artistic project, or if you guys have a personal project, a personal goal you want to do, please start it today. Start it today. Stick with it. Because my life has been tremendously impacted in only the most positive ways because of Dead Rabbit Radio. And I want to share that with you. I want to share that inspiration with you. Okay, Dave. (laughs) Dave's still trying to pull those staples out. Don't pull the staples out. Those are like medical staples. You're going to jingle the rest of the episode. Dave, let's go ahead and toss you the keys of the Jason Jalopy. We are leaving behind Dead Rabbit Command. We are driving all the way out to Little Rock, Arkansas. (laughs) And by the time we get there, it's nighttime. There's a wolf sitting on a big old rock and we pass... It's actually the Little Rock, the Little Rock in the middle of Arkansas. We see a little wolf. He's howling. And like the moon's in the sky and there's an owl. I'm just naming off animals now. There's a squirrel. All the animal noises I can possibly do. An elephant walks in. We're in Little Rock, Arkansas. And the streets seem to be empty. You can even hear hear the bluebirds. No, I'm just joking. The streets seem empty, but they're not. There's two people stalking the streets of Little Rock at this time in the morning. One is the Little Rock Slasher. But hot on his trail is the real-life superhero, Shadow Vision. This is true story. This is actually going on. This is totally true. Back on August 24th, 2020 in Little Rock, Arkansas... Some guy's walking down the road early in the morning and he sees someone slumped up, kind of curled up on the porch of this house. He goes to check on him. Hey, buddy, you okay? You okay, buddy? He wasn't, he wasn't okay. <laughs> just, just to jump to the conclusion, he's dead. This guy, Larry Eugene McChristian, a 64-year-old man, has been stabbed to death. 
So the dude calls the police and the medics and everything, and they show up. And what they find out, that wasn't his house. That wasn't his house. He just had ended up on the stoop of some random person's house. And the police find out that this homeowner has a security camera. Which <laughs> probably could have been half the people are being killed on your front porch. The police are reviewing the footage and what they see. This took place in the early morning. They see Larry get murdered on camera. This guy's like stabbing him. He's like, oh, oh. And then the dude leaves. Not Larry. <laughs> He's unfortunately staying there. The killer leaves. He like walks off camera. And then he comes back and starts stabbing him some more. And then leaves again. But unfortunately, this camera footage did not show the killer's face. The cops are like, oh, no. We were hoping our job would be super easy. We were hoping that he would wave at the camera and hold up a copy of his driver's license. The very next month, September 23rd, 2020, a man is found on a porch. A man is found stabbed to death on a porch. This time, though, it was his own porch. I don't really know if that makes a difference. I don't know if it's more comfortable to die on your own porch. I've never been murdered, but I figured it'd be more comfortable to die on my own porch, right? Because you're like, ah. Oh. Like, all the memories, you know what I mean? Like, at least you're, like, dying in a familiar place versus dying on someone else's porch. I don't know, though. He stabbed to death on his own porch, and this guy's name was Jeff Welch. He was also 64. And the police at this point are kind of thinking, these two might be related. I mean, they have a lot of similarities, right? They're both stabbed on porch. Well, they're both stabbed. That's the most important thing, right? They're both stabbed. They're both stabbed on porches. They're both around the same age. And it seemed to be that these people were just out late at night. They had no connection to each other. They had no connection to, like, criminal activity. They just got stabbed. But then nothing happened. Nothing happened until April 11th, 2021, where Deborah Walker, a 41-year-old woman, was walking down 19th and Marshall. She was in that area in Little Rock. And she passes a stranger who pulls out a knife and just starts stabbing her. Now, she survived. She was stabbed 15 times, and she survived. But less than 24 hours later, the Little Rock Slasher struck again. Less than 24 hours later, and only a block away from where Deborah Walker was stabbed, Marlon Anthony Franklin, a 40-year-old homeless man, is stabbed to death. Those are the four victims we know about. We don't know if this guy's traveling around the country or what. But we don't have to worry. We do not have to worry, citizens of the world, because Shadow Vision, a real-life superhero, is on the case. Now, I've done a couple episodes on real-life superheroes. I love real-life superheroes. I do think it's kind of dorky. I think it's kind of dorky. But the idea of being able to dress up in a superhero costume and walk around and fight crime, who doesn't want to do that? Who doesn't want to do that? Now, I'm not physically fit enough to do it. I'm not even physically fit enough to put on the costume. It would look like a joke on me. Unless that was my identity, if I was like the Incredible Bulk or something like that. But otherwise, that's a bad idea. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But even like dressing up in the gear, dude, oh, that'd be so dope. And you're walking around, you're like, stop, evildoer. And then you're like jumping out of the shadows and grabbing people and you're punching them in the head. Where's your money? (laughs) They're like, dude, are you just a criminal as well? Well, that's the interesting thing about this. We did a big episode on the rise and fall of Phoenix Jones. He was a real-life superhero in Seattle. And in that episode, he does become a criminal in real life. Like, he was this, he was the prototypical real-life superhero. And then he turned out, if I remember correctly, to be a drug dealer. Allegedly, right? I think the trial's still going on, but... Well, that's when we take a look at this character named Shadow Vision. And again, I am completely enamored by this dude. Because his gear looks dope. This guy, he has one of the best superhero costumes that I've seen. Well, okay, let me back up. One of the best real-life superhero costumes I've ever seen. He's all clad in black. He does kind of look like he's wearing hockey pads in a couple places. He says it's bulletproof. But I don't think so. I think he got it at Big Five Sports. He does have two katanas and two sais. You know, those little things that Raphael used and people used for farming in ancient Japan. He has one of those on each hip. And he has two swords in his back like Storm Shadow. He's dressed in all black, like black armor, not like black tights. And then he has a helmet on. 
And I watched the interview with him, and if you didn't think this costume could get badass enough, he has a voice changer in his helmet. Now, it does make it very hard to understand. It does sound like he's whispering. It does sound like he's quite a shy superhero, but it's still dope. I love real-life superheroes. So when I saw that Shadow Vision was hunting the Little Rock Slasher, I was like, oh, I didn't know the Little Rock Slasher existed. Now I saw this article from Oxygen.com that Shadow Vision is hunting down the serial killer that I wasn't even worried about. But here's the problem. What if your real-life superhero who's hunting a serial killer is a serial killer? Oxygen.com, their true crime section, reached out to this dude to ask him about this hunt for the Little Rock Slasher. And he said that he has already killed two serial killers. Shadow Vision, who's probably more than capable enough with his weaponry to kill someone, says that he killed a serial killer in North Carolina and another serial killer in Arkansas back in the 1990s. Now, sure, they're serial killers. I'm not saying they need human rights or anything like that. But I'm pretty sure if you kill more than one person, you're a serial killer. It's generally if you kill more than one person over a prolonged period of time. If you do it very quickly, it's a mass killing. And if you do it over the course of a couple hours in multiple locations, it's a spree killing. But if you do it over a prolonged period of time, it's a serial killer. So that's like the definition between those. He's, he admitted this. He admitted this, and now he doesn't want to catch the Little Rock Slasher and bring him to justice. He wants to kill this guy, too. He has challenged the Little Rock Slasher, who has a body count of three, right? They're almost tied. They're almost tied. He wants to challenge the Little Rock Slasher to a one-on-one -on -one fight. That's dope. <laughs> That's so awesome. That is so awesome. Now, obviously, I hope I was not to say, oh, Shadow Vision wins, but then he's just killed another person. This is interesting. Shadow Vision, I'm pretty sure that's against the law. I'm pretty sure, like, yeah, serial killers suck, but I'm pretty sure you just can't kill them. I'm pretty sure you can't acknowledge it in an interview on Oxygen.com. But he's admitted to killing two people, and I don't know what the Arkansas police have to say about this. They must know this guy is nuts, right? Which actually, I was going to say, maybe if you go, I just make it up. But if someone who's nuts say, say that they've murdered two people, you should probably look into it a little bit more. And he also says he loves hunting down high-ranking gang members. And he does have this weird belief that the Little Rock Slasher is obsessed with Shadow Vision. He's like, I know you're on my Facebook page. I know he's watching every move, so I have a challenge for you. I know your name. I'm coming for you. I'm looking for you right now. He does say that he knows this guy's name. He's not even giving it to the police. He wants to have a one-on-one -on -one fight with a serial killer. Hey, that's dope. I'm not going to knock the guy's hustle. I'm a little concerned that he's killed more than one person. And, you know, even though I don't like serial killers, that's against the law. You also probably should go to jail. But until then, this is dope. I would love to see this fight. I imagine it's going to take place in a warehouse. A, an abandoned warehouse where Shadow Vision is walking in with his swords. And he's like, come out. Come out, little rock slasher. And then they find Shadow Vision's body on a patio somewhere. I, I, I don't think you could take out a... A random serial killer like this. A Ted Bundy dude? Easily. Easily. I think most of America could beat the butter out of Ted Bundy. I think he was a wuss. I think a lot of them. I think John Wayne Gacy. I think Jeffrey Dahmer. But they all used like tricks and drugs and manipulation. Someone who's just walking down the street. Someone who's just walking down the street with a knife randomly stabbing people. That's fast. That takes speed. It takes skill. That has the element of surprise. Like, for all Shadow Vision knows, he's going to be walking on the street one day. He ha Bulletproof armor is not knife-proof. I could easily identify many vulnerable parts of his uniform. And I was just looking at photos on Oxygen.com. I'm not walking behind him with a knife. Shadow Vision, I wish you the best. I really do love real-life superheroes. I wish you the best. I also wish that you would stop antagonizing serial killers because maybe he knows you can beat him and he's like, oh no, I thought I was the biggest baddest dude in Little Rock. I guess I'll just move to Miami and stab people down there. The cops aren't looking for him down there. 
Shadow Vision, maybe don't scare him away. You know what, Shadow Vision, maybe just give his name to the police. That's what I think would be the sensible thing. But I am not a real-life superhero. <laughs> I don't know how the industry works. Maybe once your swords are drawn, they must taste blood. Dave, let's go ahead and toss you the keys to the carpenter copter. We are leaving behind Little Rock. We're going to take a look at a trio of terrifying ghost stories. First off, take us all the way out to Huntsville, Alabama. <laughs> a lot of times when we think about how spooky a ghost story is, we think about how it affects us as living people, right? You don't want to see a ghost when you're in the shower. You don't want to be walking out to your car and you see like a little ghost kid hiding underneath it. We think about the haunted house in the end of the street or the fear that our own house may be haunted. Going into the bathroom of your workplace late at night when you're the only employee and you hear the bathroom door open behind you. All this stuff we think about, wouldn't that be creepy? I don't want to be in a situation with a ghost, but very rarely do we think about the situations of the ghosts themselves. How sucky it might be to be a ghost. Now, I would say most ghosts live a pretty chill life, right? But I think there are some ghosts that end up in really bad situations. I know at the local Walmart here, I've talked about this before, it's haunted. The Walmart in Hood River is haunted. And it's haunted, apparently, this is the theory, it's haunted by an old lady. At one point, there was a huge chunk in the back of the store that was fabrics and crafts. It had one of the biggest fabrics and crafts sections in the entire area and they ended up turning it into automotive and the theory was my theory really the employees were like we don't even like being back there late at night it's on it but my theory was like i wonder if there was an old lady who loved going through arts and crafts and she was there for years going through all the new designs and looking at all the happy kids who are like yeah get to do arts and crafts and then she's looking at carburetor fluid and socket wrenches and stuff like that. And she's mad. She keeps knocking stuff over. That's how they feel there's a ghost in there. That would suck. So I think some ghosts have it bad. And I found these three ghost stories where the torment these guys are going through has to be awful. In Huntsville, Alabama, there's the Heritage Bible College. And on campus, there is the... WHBC Frat House. So toga, toga. I mean, I guess it's Bible, it's Bible College. They're actually wearing togas for their Greek courses they're doing. But at the Frat House, that must they must throw some really cool parties at the Frat House at the Bible College. Late at night, you can hear a ghost walking around. And they know who this ghost is. It's a former youth minister who resided there, Anthony Stevens. And you're going to hear his footsteps walking through the house. He's also known for flushing the toilet. I got to say, out of all the places I could haunt, a frat house would be pretty dope. You'd be invited to all the parties. Secondly, they can't get rid of you. You're a ghost. They're all putting body paint on you. You're holding up glow sticks and dancing. That'd be dope. I would love to be at a frat house. Constantly possessing dudes and being like, hey, ladies, this way. <laughs> Head spinning around and throwing up, throwing up. Bleh. Frat house would be dope. But what made this one get the list of really bad hauntings, bad places to haunt, is that Anthony Stevens is not alone. There are two other ghosts trapped with him. And not only are they trapped in the house with him, because you can figure if he's like in the bathroom flesh in the toilet, you can have like one up in the attic just kind of sitting there all spooky, and then one in the basement playing pinball or whatever. They could have their own rooms. But no, at WHBC Frat House, Anthony Stephen walks through the house. And these two other spirits, Robert Ekibus and Adam Cooper, they know the names of these ghosts as well, are constantly right behind Anthony. The whole time, you hear Anthony's footprints, and then you hear two people standing right behind him going, Cheese. Cheese. Jeez. Forever. You just hear people saying the word cheese, or a word that sounds like cheese, as you hear disembodied footprints. Anthony's walking, 
While his two other buddies have Casper bodies, you don't hear them walking. They're just kind of floating around, and forever and always, they say, cheese. Cheese. That sounds like bullying, bro. I'm wondering if, like, Anthony was constantly pestered by these two guys, and they just said cheese. They were very inventive. They weren't really good at coming up with nicknames or jokes or anything. And they just said cheese to him all the time. And it's like this eternal torment. That would suck. Could you imagine being trapped in a haunted house, not as a living person, trapped as a spirit? You're the haunting with your bully. That might have to be one of the worst possible death outcomes ever. Your bully was chasing you down the street. You both fell at the same time and a steamroller ran you both over. Your guts squished together, forming one mass. But somehow, somehow the coroner could tell that the bully was still punching you in the liver as you guys were getting squished. Now you and the bully are haunting a location. And the bully hasn't stopped being a bully. (laughs) If anything, this has emboldened him. He now has the power to pull all sorts of pranks. He's giving you ghost wedgies. He's giving you ghost noogies. He constantly throws you into hell and you have to claw your way back to the world of the living. He's like, (laughs) he's laughing so hard. That's nuts. Could you imagine haunting the same location as people who taunted you all the time? That might be a fate worse than death. But if you think that's bad, Dave, fire up that carpenter copter. We're leaving behind Heritage Bible College. This episode might run a little long. This episode might run a little long, but I'm having a kick out of this one. This next one's actually really sad. (laughs) This next one's actually pretty sad. Dave, fire up that carpenter copter. We are leaving behind Heritage Bible College. We are headed all the way out to Valonia, Arkansas. This one, I I don't even know. Like, this one's so disturbing, I almost didn't include it because the other two are kind of funny. But I think, like, talk about being trapped somewhere that you didn't even want to be in the first place. In Valonia, there is the Valonia School Annex Basement. So right there, right? The basement's bad enough to be trapped in, but you're not even cool enough to be trapped in the basement. You're trapped to the attachment of the basement. This is an interesting haunting because it is only visible during school hours. I have a theory about that in a second. I'll get to that. But this is only visible during school hours. What a weird set of rules for a haunting. It's almost always the opposite. If you go to the Valonia School Annex Basement, there's a little basement window, you know, that you can kind of look through. Or like if you look through the crack in the door into this room. During the school day, if you look into this room, if you open the door, you won't see it. But if you look through the window or if you look through like a crack in the door, you will see in the dark. I guess they don't use this room anymore. In the dark room, you will see the ghosts of special education students moaning and screaming. That's that's utterly terrifying. <laughs> Jason, you just told all these jokes. You just told all these jokes about cheese. And now you're telling us a super depressing one. The moans, it's so interesting because you don't just hear them. You look into this room and you will see the ghosts of special education students screaming and moaning in pain and fear as if they were being disciplined by their teacher. Not like, not like, oh, you did bad on that test. Like corporal punishment, like the teacher spanking them with a paddle or hitting them with a ruler. And you're hearing these children scream out loud in the dark for it to stop. I guess at this school, they used to shuttle the, sp- I doubt they do this anymore. I'm sure they have a room above ground. But back in the day, apparently, They shuttled the special needs students underneath the school and then into an annex underneath the school and then beat them. And all that psychic energy is trapped there. That's spooky. Like, I can't think of almost a worse place to be. (laughs) Well, the next story might be worse in another way. But when we talk about haunting, we talk a lot about psychic energy. Like, when we talk about hauntings, we go, what's a recording of a real event that's stuck there? So something traumatic happens, and it plays out over and over and over again. But the soul itself, 
the person who left that recording has entered the afterlife. This was just an event that was so traumatic. It's just a recording. And you can't interact with those types of ghosts. And then we have ghosts that the actual soul is still there, or demon disguised as a soul, whatever path you want to go down on that as well, because there's multiple possibilities with that. So it could just be a recording. This could just be a psychic recording of all of the torment and abuse that these children allegedly go through. I actually have to add that. I don't want Valonia's school to sue me. They show up at my door with two lawyers and four teachers with paddles. I'm like, ah! Like, if this left such a psychic mark on the room, these children in the darkness crying out as they're being punished for rules they probably don't even really understand. Is it that, or are these actually the souls of these kids trapped in that room? It's such a weird phenomenon that it only happens during the day and it only happens during the school day. First, I thought this might be a cover. They might still be doing, allegedly, might still be doing some shady stuff down there. They're selling drugs. And they tell kids, don't look in here during the day because you will see an awful sight. <laughs> That's where all the teachers nap. All the teachers nap and smoke cigarettes and everything like that. It's weird. Maybe it's a legend to cover up. Not necessarily illicit activity. Please don't send your lawyers and paddles after me. But it's weird. It's super rare to see a haunting that only happens during the day. Especially only during the school day. So it could be more urban legend than ghost story. But if this is a true haunting, terrifying terrifying story even if it's just their psychic energy see if it's their souls trapped there that's absolutely horrifying but even if it's just their psychic energy that's terrifying because you imagine you had that psychic energy there of these kids who had been beaten over the years and then as new kids are brought down there and other kids matriculate out of that school and go on those kids are now sitting in a room full of that psychic energy, full of that darkness and that fear and that pain. And they're picking up on that psychic energy. And then the teacher turns around and goes, lesson starts now. And she's just, I'm not saying that they were actually brutal people. She's swinging a bat. She's swinging a bat as she's walking through the crowd. But imagine your own physical torment that's happening right now. And you can feel the psychic torment of the students before you. Dave, we got one last destination. We are leaving behind Bologna School before the lawyers can get all their paperwork finalized. We are headed all the way out to California. <laughs> Specifically, we're headed to Banning, California. Banning is a city in Riverside County, California, where I grew up in Riverside. I spent a lot of my life down there. Beautiful area. Disneyland's around there. We're not going to Disneyland. You guys are super excited. Disneyland goes. That sounds great. No, because see, that would be a good place to be dead. You'd constantly be walking around and going on rides and stuff like that. Whee! You'd be like a ghost on Space Mountain and stuff like that. You'd be a ghost in the Haunted Mansion. What? That'd be awesome, man. That's one of my top ten places to die. Disneyland. But we're going past Disneyland. We're headed to... A Payless Shoe Source in Banning, California. So we walk into this Payless... You're already, you're already like, Dude, this would be the most depressing place to die. We walk into this Payless Shoe Source. And we're trying on some shoes. You got any size 13s? I'm a size 13. Get my new shoes. Buy one, get one half off. <laughs> this has become an advertisement for Payless Shoe Source. Buying a couple of shoes, but we're not here for the great deals. We're here because of the story of a little boy. This ghost is trapped in the break room of a Payless shoe source. If you guys don't know what a Payless shoe source is, Payless shoe source, while their shoes are very inexpensive, you got some good deals. They do. I bought a lot of shoes there and the shoes hold up really well. But they, the stores are ugly. They're ugly places to be in. They're always a mess. They're always yellow. They're this weird, like, 1970s yellow. There's nothing fun to do. People generally don't like buying shoes unless they're, like, Sex in the City or something like that. And, you, if, and if you are buying shoes and you want it to be fun, you're definitely not going to a Payless shoe source, right? You're going to, like, a Gucci store or something like that. Payless shoe source is basically the Walmart of shoes. And so this little boy is trapped inside the break room of a Payless shoe source. But that's not all, right? That's not, that's not bad enough to end out this episode. The story goes like this. A long time ago, 
This little boy was brought into Payless Shoe Source by his mom. And he really wanted a pair of shoes there, which I don't understand why she would bring him there if she wasn't going to buy him shoes. Now, maybe she was just going to buy herself shoes. And he was just along for the ride. But again, it's not fun to go. Why would you bring someone to a place that they hated if you weren't going, the shoes are like six bucks. They're not even expensive shoes. It's buy one, get one half off. She didn't want to buy him these shoes. She didn't want to buy him a pair of Air Force One knockoffs or whatever he had his little mind wrapped around. Nuki shoes or Adidas or Reblock. She wouldn't, all the name brands, all the name brands of Payless Shoe Source, she would not buy one for this little boy. So he got so upset, he ran out of the store. This little boy's last moments play out like this. Mom, mom, please, for the last time, can I buy these shoes? And in the throes of sorrow, deep heartbreak, because he didn't get a pair of knockoff shoes, he ran into traffic and was promptly hit by a car. He didn't get the shoes he wanted. He didn't get the shoes he wanted. And now his ghost is trapped at a Payless shoe source. Absolutely terrifying, but that's not all, because as I was researching this story, I didn't plan this. What a gift this was on my four-year anniversary of this show. As I was researching this, looking into whether or not any of this is true, right? Even these simple ghost stories, I try to see if there's other versions of the legends, where they come from, stuff like that. I found an old friend. We haven't talked about this. We have not talked about this website in probably like three, four hundred episodes. So not everyone is aware of my love affair with the website Backpackerverse. Backpackerverse is just this insane ghost. It's actually a hiking website that also has an entire section dedicated to horoscopes, astrology, and ghost stories. The craziest ghost stories you'll ever hear. I'll put some episodes in the show notes. I love Backpackerverse. And what a treat it was to come back here because Backpackerverse has another spin on this legend. This is creepy. We'll wrap it up like this because I don't want you to get too scared before you go to bed. Little ghost trapped in a Payless shoe store. That's spooky for him. Check this out, though. Apparently, according to Backpackerverse, the boy does not appear as a boy. Like, he's still boy size. This is so weird. And uh, I should say this right now. Backpackerverse has a tendency to make stuff up. They really do have a tendency to make stuff up. But maybe not in this case. Maybe in this case, this is totally true. If this is true, it's terrifying. The little boy in the Payless Shoe Source is boy-sized, but he's turning into an old man. So it's almost as if his body is withering away. The boy who didn't have a chance to grow up is growing older in the afterlife. Not just like a little wrinkly old Oompa Loompa. He looks weathered. Imagine more of like a tiny Clint Eastwood. And even his clothes look weathered. Like he's been standing out in the elements for a hundred years. While well, he's just been in this Payless shoe stores for probably about a decade or two. In this story, there's a woman named Anna. She worked at a nearby beauty salon. She gets off work at the beauty salon and she goes, you know what? I did a really good job on those people's hair. I'm going to treat myself to a pair of shoes and Payless Shoe Source. That's how good of a job I did. So she walks into Payless Shoe Source and they're getting ready to close. But they know her. Hey, Anna, how are you doing? She's like, hey, guys. She sees the pair of shoes that she wants. She locates the box in her size. And she puts the box down on the floor and as she is taking the lid off of the box this little boy <laughs> this sounds totally made up now that I went back and looked <laughs> I went back and looked at my notes so I was like okay anyways I should probably review my notes before I start recording she oh this sounds fake but anyways it'll, it's interesting nonetheless she opens the box she opens up the shoe box and out jumps <laughs> out jumps a little boy a little boy but he's decayed and rotten he looks like a wrinkly old man who's also just 
melting away. Like he has like those open sores. She described it as he looked like someone who had been rotting for hundreds of years, an unpreserved corpse. And when he jumped out of the box, she said all of his body parts were in the wrong places. He was just like a mishmash of arms and legs. And her rationale behind this is that when he was hit by the car, he blew up. He, he got hit by Speed Racer. He blew up. And he got completely mangled on the road. And then his ghost has been spending all this time trying to get the body parts in the right order. But they can't. And this ghost is slowly rotting away. But not rotting away, right? It's still trapped in this decaying form on Earth. But it's this little boy who's an old man who's all grody and stuff. With his arms messed up. And his legs messed up. I find that interesting... I find it very interesting that the only account I found of that was in Backpackerverse. The fact that he was all gross and old and all mixed up. I didn't find that version of the story anywhere else. So, it could be true. I I would find it very hilarious if ghosts always hopped out of boxes when you're ghost hunting. But that would have to be... like Even if that part's not... If that part's true, then this is a completely hellish existence for this boy. Because not only is he a ghost, but he's still aging. But he's not like becoming like a dapper young man. He's just an old wrinkly boy. And then he's just a mishmash of body parts. And then he doesn't live in the break room of the Bayless Shoe Stores. He lives in the shoebox. He lives in the shoebox. That's ten times worse. But let's put that aside. Even if we get rid of that one, being trapped in a shoe store forever sounds awful. And it seems like we don't think about the ghosts in these scenarios. We think about how it impacts us. Like, oh, I don't want to go back in the break room. There might be a spooky old ghost back there. (laughs) Your boss is the one spreading that rumor. Well, I guess you just got to work through your break then. You don't want to take a break. It's so spooky. You're like, yeah, I guess. I guess you'll get 15 minutes of free work out of me. We don't think about the ghost. We don't think about the ghost. We're so selfish. We think about us being scared by the ghost. But maybe it's something we do need to keep in mind. Maybe it's something we do need to keep in mind. (laughs) If you ever think about killing someone, think, would this be an appropriate place for this person to haunt? Maybe the next time you're getting ready to kill somebody, take him to Disneyland. You, you pull the guy out of his car, it's a carjacking, and right before you shoot him, say, you know what, sir? Your wife, your kids, they can get out of the car, but me and you, we're going on a road trip. And the guy's terrified he's driving the whole time. Can I see my family again? I don't know. Are they also going to die at Disneyland? <laughs> They're like, what? What was that part? You're like, oh, nothing. And you have him drive you across country. It'd be like a funny road trip movie. It's like Thelma and Louise, but only one person dies at the end of the movie. And you drive all the way out. Every so often he can call his wife and say a couple words before you grab the phone away and go, that's enough for today. And then hang up. And then you take him to Disneyland. He's trying to he's trying to signal to the workers at Disneyland with Morse code. He's blinking at him and they're like, sir, do you need some Benadryl? Do you have allergies? Nah, he's fine. <laughs> You're pointing a gun. You're like, this is a fake gun. This is a prop gun I got from the Davy Crockett store. They're like, that's weird. That kind of looks like a 9mm Glock. And you're taking him all over Disneyland. You're like, where, sir, do you want to haunt forever? Do you want to haunt Star Tours? Do you want to haunt the People Mover? He's like, no, not the People Mover. Please, not the People Mover. And you find that one special place. You take him to the Tiki Room, and he just is chilling. He's finally relaxed. He's finally decided to make peace. He wants to be in a room full of animatronic birds forever. And so you shoot him. (laughs) And then his ghost is kind of floating around. He goes, you know, it's kind of peaceful in here. (laughs) The gunshot was quite painful. I'm really surprised no one called security. I'm surprised that guy got away. But now that I'm a ghost floating around in the tiki room, things don't seem too bad. Sure, his wife and his kids will never see him again. His ghost is forever trapped in this world of animatronics. But it could be worse. It could always be worse. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be your email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. TikTok is at deadrabbitradio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great day.